I'm Jay Barkley. I'm a professor of pediatric infectious diseases. I've been based at the uh, overseas program in Kilifi for about uh, 21 years. Um, my research is really in um, causes of death and things that we can do about preventing deaths in, children, in the most vulnerable groups of children in developing countries. In, in a broad sense, it, it, it's um, addressing groups such as children with malnutrition or, or newborn infants. But more specifically, my main focus is on um, infections and antibiotic trials to try and improve treatment of uh, severe infections in children. So although there's been progress in reducing child mortality, um, we still see a very high uh, mortality rate, particularly in newborns. But it, it, there are also other um, high-risk groups in whom we don't seem to see any reduction in the fatality rates that when, we see, when children get admitted to hospital. The other thing that's emerged from recent research from our group and from other groups is that after children are discharged from hospital, there's still considerable mortality. So the st some of the studies that we've done have shown that for every one child who dies in hospital, another one dies post-discharge. So a big focus of our research is also understanding the post-discharge uh, period. Is it something that's a problem that hasn't been treated in sufficiently in hospital? Or is it something about the child's environment or uh, another infection that they're exposed to? Um, so uh, uh, understanding those helps us understand how to make the treatments more effective. So uh, that, that's our aim, is to fight uh, tropical illnesses. Um, uh, the largest study we do, which is the CHAIN network, which is the Childhood Acute Illness and Nutrition Network, um, is a study that's at um, typical hospitals across nine sites in Africa and in South Asia. And in, in those sites, we're looking at um, what are the preven potentially preventable causes of mortality in children after all of the recommended treatments have been applied. So at the sites, we uh, make sure that their following guidelines and treatments are available. We then follow a large cohort of, of, of about 4,000 children um, who are at increased risk of mortality to see what factors are, and what factors are leading to uh, an increased risk of mortality in hospital and after discharge with the purpose of then taking some of the findings into clinical trials in order to directly uh, improve outcomes. We've just finished a small but intensive trial of uh, a, a, a potentially new antibiotic treatment for neonatal sepsis. And we're doing a, a very large trial of uh, first-line antibiotics for severely ill, malnourished children. Now, those are, we're doing those trials because there's an emerging, increasing problem with antimicrobial resistance. In the settings where we work, typically people don't have any information on what exact bacteria are causing illness and what the sensitivity or resistance to antibiotics is. So we need policies which um, are going to be, be able to be used in those typical settings. And these are settings where the vast majority of children are, are treated. There are some information around, but they typically come from university hospitals or private hospitals where only a tiny proportion of children get treated. So by investing in um, research in that more generalizable population, we're, we're providing information and improvements in guidelines and knowledge which will improve outcomes in a much broader sense. With regards to translation, we do a lot of work in the laboratory, firstly, uh, we do a lot of work on characterizing what kinds of infections children have. Sometimes that uses the normal microbiology techniques and sometimes that uses much more advanced modern molecular uh, techniques for detecting bacteria, for detecting uh, resistance and detecting other kinds of infections. We also do a lot of work with partners overseas and other labs looking at the effect that undernutrition and infections have on children's metabolism. By getting this very detailed data and putting it together with the detailed information that we collect from the children themselves, we're then able to uh, look at what pathways might be intervenable. So what pathways could be interrupted or changed, which would then improve outcomes. And so we can translate those 
findings from the laboratory into initially small trials where we look at safety or look at some of the whether or not the pathways are being affected and then into larger trials to go into policy to improve outcomes.